You're working at the ER one day when a 12-year-old boy comes in uh, complaining of belly pain. It started uh, during the night, and uh, and then it proceeded to he proceeded to have vomiting with it too. You do your examination of him, and his belly's actually pretty soft, and eventually he's able to tolerate PO, and you send him home with a diagnosis of acute gastroenteritis. Feeling pretty good, uh, you go home, and the next day the kid comes back, but this time. He he's complaining of testicular pain, and you'll do an exam, and you notice that the testicle is very uh, tender, and uh, you end up diagnosing him at this point with uh, testicular torsion. Now, after 24 hours, that testicle is pretty much dead. So time is testicle. So what we need to do is we we want this not to happen. If you can get this testicle diagnosed and detorsed within six hours, you got a 90% salvage rate. Within the first 12 hours, it's about 50%. After a day, it's about, at about a day, it's 10%. And after a day, it's about 0%. So we need to diagnose this fast, which means you need to be thinking about it. So let's talk about testicular torsion. First, let's go over some anatomy. All right, so here we have the testicle. Now let me go through all the parts here. So this actually, this purple part here is the testicle. And you can see I drew these little pedunculated things on here. These are the testicular appendages. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, and this is covered by something called the tunica vaginalis, but the visceral layer. There's another layer for that. This here, this is the epididymis, and this is the vas deferens. This vas deferens runs through the spermatic cord along with an artery and a vein. So this here is called the pampiniform plexus, but just remember there's an artery, vein, and and, sperm, and uh, vas running through here. This all is covered, actually, with the tunica vaginalis parietal layer. And all that is actually covered by the cremasteric muscle. So this is your uh, normal anatomy now. Let's look at the abnormal anatomy. So here I've drawn two torsed testicles. Uh, let's look at them. And so there's extravaginal and intravaginal torsion. And what we're talking about is this parietal uh, tunica vaginalis. So in the extravaginal one, the torsion, the twisting part, happens outside of the tunica vaginalis. So you can see it here. Even the cremasteric muscle, the entire spermatic cord is getting twisted. Now you have the intravaginal one. That's the other kind. And you can see within the, uh, within, within the spermatic cord, it might look okay. Outside of it, you can see here I've drawn the, the rest of it. But within it, we have twisting of these vital structures, the artery, the vein, and the vas. And so this is our extra, our intravaginal, vaginalis uh, torsion. So, there are two peaks when this happens, the peak incidence. So there's a perinatal period, and it, which means immediately before birth and immediately after birth, you're going to get extra vaginal torsion. And so usually these kids are going to come out with a dead testicle because there's nothing you could have done because they probably they may have torsed while they were in utero. And so that, that testicle usually just has to be removed. Now the intravaginal one, this is the one that can happen uh, during puberty as the testicle is growing it, it, uh, it, it, or during trauma, it can happen as well. Now what we've always been taught is that there is actually a an attachment of the tunica vaginalis posteriorly that kind of tacks it down and in some people that is absent or that thing is actually up higher and so what that does is it prevents well if it was there it would prevent the testicle from twisting but when it's not there it allows it to twist like this and so these people tend to be at more risk for having torsion and oftentimes you might hear the words bell clapper deformity and this refers to a testicle that is missing that, and so then it ends up having a horizontal lie, and these people are, are more prone to getting testicular torsion. So what are you going to see on history with these people? Well, in the, the, the pubertal area, the uh, pu puberty age kids, they're usually going to develop a sudden onset of abdominal pain. They might get pain in the belly or pain in the inguinal area. Uh, which is referred pain there. So they may actually have pain there, and they will, of course, have pain in their testicle too. And very often they get vomiting. Epididymitis, which also causes pain, typically doesn't have this vomiting. Uh, and so you could see belly pain and vomiting. What are you going to think? You're going to think acute gastroenteritis, but we know 
that it doesn't it doesn't have to be acute gastroenteritis. So you must, you must, you must make sure you do a testicular exam in these kids who have belly pain and vomiting because you don't want to miss this. Because remember, one day that's all you got, and after a day they can have a dead testicle. So what do you look for on physical exam then? Well, of course, one thing you're going to see is that they might have a tender testicle. That's obviously one thing you, they'll know, you'll note. And one thing that you're often taught is something called Prehn's sign or Prehn's sign. And that means that scrotal elevation is going to relieve the pain. However, this is not that good a sign because you're going to see the same thing in epididymitis as well. So you really can't use it to distinguish between the two. The other thing you're, we're taught to look for is the cremasteric reflex. And what you do for that is you actually you know, rub the medial aspect of the thigh, you rub it downward like this, and the thing that you're going to notice is that the testicle is going to go up about half a centimeter. Now if you do that on the affected side over here, right, then what's going to happen? Well, you're not going to have that rise of the testicle, so this thing will not happen on this side. And that's supposed to be a pretty good sign with about 99% sensitivity. So that one's pretty good, actually. So what do you do if you're suspecting torsion? Well, this is a surgical emergency, so the first thing you're going to want to do is call urology and get them on the phone. They're going to say, did you get an ultrasound yet? You can say, I'm getting one. Uh, but I really suspect torsion on this guy, so I really need your help with this because time is testicle. And that after, after an hour, we're losing time. After six hours, we're losing. After 12 hours, we're losing uh, the ability to salvage his testicle, so I'm kind of in a hurry. So you call urology. And then while they're coming in, go ahead and get that ultrasound because this is also a pretty good test for diagnosing uh, testicular torsion. What you'll see on ultrasound is in the good testicle, you're going to see good blood flow on Doppler. This is my pathetic drawing of, a, of an ultrasound of a testicle with all this representing Doppler flow. And so you're seeing good blood flow in this untorsed testicle. However, in this torsed testicle, there's no blood flow. Because remember that the cord that comes down is what contains the blood. And if that thing is twisted and choked and strangulated, you're not going to have any blood flow. And so that's a bad thing when you don't see blood flow. Now there's one thing that you should know about. Intermittent torsion. That means it torses and untorses, torses and untorses, torses and detorses. Which means if you catch this patient when it is twisted, you're going to see no blood flow. But when it untwists, you'll see blood flow. Then it twists again, no blood flow. Then it untwists, good blood flow. And so this can happen back and forth. So if you are suspecting intermittent torsion and you see good blood flow, then you better know that and uh, tell your urologist, you know what, I, I think it's intermittently torsion and, that, and you're just seeing blood flow now, but we won't later. And so this also needs surgery to be, re to be fixed. And what is this surgery? What do they do? Well, they just take some suture, they tack this thing down. It's called a pexy. And so they prevent that thing from twisting by, you know, basically securing it uh, within the scrotum. Now, while you're waiting for the urologist to get in and while you're w to take them to the OR and they're setting up the OR, you can actually do something. You can actually manually detorse the testicle and restore blood flow. It's temporary. It doesn't last forever, and so you can't send them home after manually detorsing someone, but it'll give you, it'll buy you some time. So let's talk about manual detorsion. So let's say here we got uh, two testicles. We got the right testicle and the left testicle here, and they tend to torse from lateral to medial. So this testicle tends to go this way when it torses. And so in order to untorse it, we want to go in the opposite direction. So we're going to go from medial to lateral in order to detorse this. And this is often described as opening a book. So if you look at uh, both uh, testicles here and you line them up with a book, so this goes with this page and this goes with this page, when you open a book, you go that way, right? Now this tends to be a very painful process because, it, especially if you go the wrong direction, 
And, but that pain is actually what you're going to use to help you know if it's working. If you start going a little bit in this direction and the kid screams bloody murder, then you know what, you're going the wrong way. Go back that way and see if that helps. And you're going to have to twist more than one time around. Look here, this thing twisted twice. So sometimes you can go three times around before you can you fully untwist it. So here's what you how you open the book. You uh, basically go this way. That's the way it usually works. But if this way doesn't work, if they scream bloody murder, then go the other way. And that's called manual detorsion. And so this is our look at testicular torsion. And... Uh, we went through a whole bunch of stuff here. I hope you don't ever miss it again. Remember, the main thing, if you get nothing out of this, if you get nothing else, I want you to remember this. If you have a kid who comes in with sudden onset belly pain and vomiting, make sure you check the testicles. Do the testicular exam. Check the cremasteric reflex because you don't want to send the kid home and then have them come back the next day with a dead testicle. All right. We'll talk more in the next video. See you later.